Hey guys, and welcome to another brand new video. In this video, we actually have two very intriguing things coming out over here when it comes to the PlayStation, PlayStation 5, PlayStation 5 restocks, PlayStation VR 2, general availability, and a lot of other various things too as well, because we're now finally getting a little bit more information set on the PlayStation VR, and also getting a lot more macroeconomic data, which also goes and affects other things such as even like groceries, general goods, laptops, computers, and as well, especially... PlayStation 5s, Xboxes, GPUs, and all that other good stuff too as well. So kind of one general world thing and also some pretty specific console things. So let's go and talk about quite a few different good things as well. If any of you guys are brand new, make sure you guys are subscribed with the notifications on. As well, for the brand new PlayStation 5 giveaway with the link down below, we have the Twitter and Twitch stream as well. If you guys want those extra giveaway entries too, we got that Target link down below for the PS5 and Amazon too. And let's dive into the video. So... Very first and foremost, I want to go talk about somewhat more intriguing stuff in regards to the PlayStation VR 2. So we now have the official set numbers of what we're anticipating for stock and stock numbers and all that. So with this, we actually have 2 million units now allocated for this at launch. So basically, Sony's been trying the best to address a lot of these stock issues, and we'll get to that more in a second. But PlayStation 5, obviously, as you guys have known, has been a little bit of a struggle. It's been hard to still find throughout all these years. And as we're seeing the PlayStation VR 2, I think it seems like Sony learned a lot from the prior PlayStation 5. And they kind of want to make sure that everyone who wants to get one probably day one will be able to. Now, I think as of right now, I think the ratio is a little bit over 20 million PlayStation 5 sold. And of course, as well... Depending on the price point, we're probably not going to be seeing every single one of these people buying PlayStation VRs. Mainly because it's, number one, a little bit niche. And number two, probably going to be at least somewhat substantially expensive. So if you almost wanted to determine like a 10% ratio, I would say at the end of the day, even for Sony, that'd be pretty good. At least off the initial launch with not as many good games out. So at least it is kind of one big thing that they're addressing. And I think that they're going to hopefully have enough stock for everyone who wants one in the first month or so to go get it. Because obviously they'll keep on making more. But if they want to have at least 2 million stock piled up, they can probably keep on doing that just throughout the next few uh, months. And hopefully everyone can get one. So the PlayStation VR 2 is set to get close to 2 million units worth of stock. As Sony looks to address issues left by the global pandemic, it's been claimed. So as reported by Bloomberg, production of Sony's second virtual reality headset started in September with the final figure set to be adjusted depending on early sales once the hardware launches. So they're probably just assuming we'll get around a 10% run through, which I think, like I said, seems about realistic. The company will be looking to better uh, the 1 million sales mark the original PSVR unit earned within its first eight months on the market. And overall, the PSVR has accumulated 5 million sales as of 2020, which is funny because that's quite a while ago. But some big things to kind of note, too, when it comes to this is, number one, the VR tech was not as cool back in the day. And number two is that I think maybe more people have a little more hype around the PlayStation 5 and next gen, and they're also going to be having some cool launch titles, such as, you know, say, like, the Horizons and other various games that are already in the works as of right this second. So I do think there'll be a little bit more proper sales, although I'm almost a little bit skeptical, because we still don't know the proper sales price and other various games we can maybe play, and a lot of these PSVR 1 games aren't going to be transferring over, at least not initially. So I'm very intrigued on that, because 2 does seem ambitious, and even the article states... The initial 2 million unit goal is highly ambitious, especially as many countries are currently dealing with the cost of living crisis. And I think that would also make sense too, because if you guys had to pick and choose in your heads, I already know my answer. If I had to pick between a PlayStation 5 or an Xbox versus a VR headset, I'd probably be able to go pass on it. Like, I would say I'm a gamer at heart, so I probably would, if I was like still like, you know, living a little bit more paycheck to paycheck and such like that, or I was a little bit more strapped for cash, you know, my kids had to do something for school, whatever, I would probably still try to work in the PlayStation, because you get free games, it's free entertainment, you buy it once, you're good for like five, six, seven years, or even look at the PS4, versus a VR headset, which kind of seems a little bit more niche, and a little bit more, I guess, expensive for kind of no reason. Now, VR is cool, don't get me wrong, but like I said, like a lot of people maybe are maybe lose their jobs, they're a little bit worried about the economy, or whatever it may be, and if the price point's too high, maybe some folks may not want it. And especially for secondary markets such as like Europe or Japan, Australia, a lot of PlayStation 5s just have their prices increased. So it's kind of like, it might even be higher than we're expecting in those regions. So as you guys know, the PlayStation's at $500 USD, but higher in EU, pound, Japan, etc., and basically, you do need to have both. So this is like a tenth, like $1,000 commitment. So a lot of folks have based this on the original price point, which was $400, 350 euros, and like 550 Australian price points too as well. So a lot of people are kind of thinking like, hey, this might be kind of rough because this is going to be a really expensive double duo. Now, I'm going to be kind of curious too because we also have seen some PlayStation 
GPU, Xbox hype kind of died down a little bit more. So I'm going to be curious and see how consistent people will stay with that and spending all that money floating around. So basically, the vice president of data and analytics, Francisco Jeromeo, commented on the price issue that may affect Sony's target for the PSVR 2, saying, The rising cost of living is making many consumers wary of spending on non-essential items. If economic crisis is deepen, Sony may have to cut production. And I'd probably agree on that. Like, you guys give me your thoughts if you guys want to buy one or not. Because for me, kind of like I said, the console you get like a lot more usage on. Like I think more people can justify getting a PlayStation because you're gonna get a lot of free entertainment in as well. Like even if you don't buy games, you get a lot of free entertainment. But when it comes to a PSVR, yeah, you might get a few hours of good entertainment. But like let's say you go beat that new Horizon game and you play a few hours of Beat Saber and you check out a few other various indie games or whatever, there isn't really that much to kind of justify that $500 price tag. That's how a lot of folks kind of feel with current day VR, like the Vive and Oculus, or it's cool, it's cool tech, and you can do stuff with it. By the end of the day, there's not that many games. Although we did go in here that I do believe uh, Steam wanted to go put the new Half-Life VR on PlayStation VR, which is also kind of nifty and kind of cool. But I do agree. Like, I feel like consumers don't really want to spend as much money. And although they have the stock already kind of allocated for and printed for, I think they're still kind of stuck in like this 2020, like, oh my God, the whole world is crazy. We want a console so bad. Verse right now where people would probably buy it. It may sell out for the first few weeks, but I think after that, it'll probably be pretty readily available, kind of how the PlayStation VR is too. Like, I can see the console still selling out consistently, and PSVR may be sitting for quite a bit longer too as well. So it seems that Sony wants to not suffer in the same problem encountered with the PS5 though, and I could also see this being an issue where they maybe want to overproduce? Because, I mean, in theory, you could always just go and tone down production as time goes on, and then go and chill. Like, there's nothing really wrong with that. So, I at least, I would say the good thing though on all this, although we're kind of critiquing this a little bit, is that at least they will have stock available. I'd rather them have more stock and then Sony themselves, because I mean, I don't work at Sony. I don't really care if they do that good or bad, uh, but I would rather them go sit on 500,000, like, you know, PlayStation VRs and then make it so anyone who wants to buy one doesn't have to you know, wait like two years that some people had to wait for to get a PlayStation 5. So at least we kind of know that there's gonna be a pretty big wide like stuff for it, but we still don't even know the price for it. And I do know the features are cool too as well, but it is really a hard sell for me to go and get. So give me your thoughts and comments down below. Are you guys going to go get one? Does it depend on the price? Does it depend on how many games come out? Let me know. I would love to go and hear it too as well. And on top of that too, we also have some more intriguing stuff in regards to shipping prices as well. That's kind of why I'm somewhat upset with the price points too for the PlayStation increase. Because a few weeks slash months ago, if you guys want to look at it, there was a huge massive peak over here. Well, this is actually, this is the cost of a shipping a 50 foot container. So assume you're assuming like a PlayStation 5 or whatever. So this is actually really good news for general consumers. Cause as you guys can see, there's a huge spike. Like this is huge over here. And then they, they had like a few little vicarious spikes they had like right over on top of this. This is like right around the pandemic. This is around like probably like the tail end of 2021. And it kind of seems ever since then, like this huge massive spike, that was probably around the holiday season. Uh, that's like, you know, when Sony was <laughs> getting private jets flying out consoles. And then ever since then, we had a huge, massive decline, which is no it's getting back to the normalized side and actually almost lowering what we saw a lot in some of these like mid peer mid peak tiers, if that makes sense. So this almost is kind of good for both console wise. That's why I'm a little bit upset that PlayStation did raise their consoles because they did try to go incite a lot of shipping issues and inflation issues, which as you guys can kind of see, a lot of these spikes are kind of slowly going down. I mean, this is not even that slow. That's pretty much a straight line down like a roller coaster. And that kind of makes me sad because Sony, although they could have been maybe still just, you know, if they waited out another six months, they could have maintained the price and no one would really have cared like Microsoft did. But instead, they were like, whatever, we're going to raise the price for other regions and go from there. But this also might make it easier then for PlayStation VR shipping because still doing two million units is quite a bit. It might cost a lot more. So ideally, with these new lower shipping prices, it might make it cheaper for them electronic wise. But this also does affect up on everything. So some things like, say, food, some things like a lot of consumer technology, such as it's being made in China, like shoes, clothing, etc. This actually might be a really good bump up for everyone because this does mean that shipping prices will go lower. So companies can get more of a margin and ideally can stop raising prices as much as they have been doing these past few years, especially. Although a lot of companies do, if they can maintain, maintain that very low ground limit, limit they're going to want to maintain it. Like if you could sell $10 worth of things for, you know, 20 bucks. And before it used to be five dollars instead of the twenty bucks it was right now. Then guess what? People are gonna want to keep that in increased profit, even if everything else goes down, such as shipping and production and inflation. So, kind of some crazy stuff. So, give me your thoughts and comments down below. And as well, make sure you guys are subscribed with the notifications on as well for the brand new PlayStation Five giveaway. Amazon links down below for the PS Five Disc Digital Console Controller. Twitter and Twitch stream down below. Giveaway down below too as well. And I appreciate you guys all so much for watching. In the first place.